Hello, long time no see. I am back here to do another video um, in which I'm going to talk about six books that I have read over the past six months since we are now at the halfway point of the year, which is um, a little bit scary. It's going very quickly and a little bit in... Um, it's been a rocky year in many ways for, for many of us, um, but it's lovely to be in front of the camera again and ready to talk about books. So all the books that I have here that I'm going to talk about today, they're all translated books. Um, I haven't been reading just translated literature in this past six months. It's been quite a broad range of things, but um, I don't know, I just wanted to talk about translated books today. For no, for no reason. So let's start with the book that I have most recently read, and that one is Another Life by Theodore Kalafatidis. I don't know whether this is going to be shiny because it is a library book, so it's uh, got, uh, got the plastic wrap over it and it might catch the glare of the sun. However, this book is a Swedish book. So I, I believe it was written in Swedish, or it might have been originally written in Greek and then the author wrote it also in Swedish, and then it got translated to English. Um, because, because this book is kind of about the process in which the author came to decide to write this book. It's a memoir, but not like a memoir of his entire life, it's just a memoir of um, his year, I guess, in 2015, in which he turns 75 years old, and he... Um, feels like he can't write anymore. He's quite a prolific author here in Sweden, and uh, suddenly he can't write anymore. So this book kind of tackles him kind of getting to, or coming to terms with his age and his art and kind of where he feels like his writing comes from. It also looks at the concept of home, having lived in Sweden since he was 25 years old, um, but still feeling quite Greek, especially in the times of um, the refugee crisis that came to Sweden and Sweden sort of, I don't want to say modernization pro well, I guess modernization process in which it focuses more on individualization and sort of its loosening of ties to the socialist state that it once had, like in its heyday. Um, so this book kind of it tackles all of those in quite a nice, uh, succinct way. Um, I really like the perspective of it coming from a 75 year old and that perspective of age and relation to art and the sort of creation of art. I tend to never read memoirs, I don't like memoirs. Um, but this one I was okay with, I gave it four stars. I think part of the good reason is that I actually don't know this author at all, I've never read any of his books. I'm tempted now to read some of his books, but uh, not knowing him kind of made me feel I could read this perhaps as more a fictional account, I guess, or at least it didn't feel like I had to attach so much meaning to the truth or the reality of it. Um, so I think that's the sort of memoirs that I might be more interested in the future. So the next book that I am going to talk about is An Orphan World by Giuseppe Caputo. Um, this book I got in London from Gaze the Word. I It was a recommendation actually from the booksellers there, because um, I emailed them, because I was only going to be in London for a day, um, so I emailed them to get one book, which I'm going to talk about next. Uh, I'm actually, I need to get two books that I'm going to talk about in this haul. And then I asked for a recommendation for a third book, and they recommended this one. And of the three books I bought from them, I think this one was actually my favourite. So props to the booksellers that gave the word. Um, this book is... Uh, how, to, how to explain it? This book is set in sort of an unnamed uh, Latin American country in which a father and son are facing poverty um, as their street that they live on sort of begins to change and the, the city around them begins to change. The son is gay and then at the very, or quite early on in this novel, there is like a pretty terrible, graphic, um, brutal mass murder of gay men um, in this city and their sort of bodies are strewn all over the place. Um, so it, it, but that's not really the focus of this book, at least I wouldn't say it's the focus of the book. I mean, the focus of this book is more the father and son relationship, in which the father loves his son unconditionally, yet has this fear of um, his son kind of going out into this world that hates him. Um, but also it's the sort of the relationship of the father trying to keep the two of them afloat and trying to ensure that they have a place to live, a house over their heads. And it's kind of like the father comes up with all these really wacky ways of trying to make money and the son's 
tries to support that, um, but the son also has concerns and worries over his father. So it's about this like sort of connection between the two in which they're both looking after the other um, and both feeling looked after. And it's just a very charming uh, book, even though it is quite sad and quite disturbing in many respects, um, there's also moments of humour in it which really like sort of balances it out. And it, I think at the end, like the message that it's kind of saying or portraying is a very beautiful one. Um, and I really, really valued that. So then the other book that I got from Gaze the Word is Crossing by Paitin Statovci. Um, this book, uh, <laughs> how to explain this book without kind of really giving it too much away. The translating of this title is quite special because in the Finnish, which it originally is written in, the title literally translates as the heart of Tiranen, I think. Um, however, in translation, it's been changed to Crossing, and I think Crossing is very much a very apt title for this book. This book follows um, two characters and the sort of the journeys that they take growing up and sort of how they kind of leave Albania to travel through different European countries, all because of um, sort of the tendencies for cross-dressing that one of them presented and wasn't appreciated by their family. Therefore, crossing kind of encaptures that feeling of crossing identities and crossing gender boundaries. It also crosses uh, borders as it deals with this whole process of moving across from place to place, um, either as a refugee or as an immigrant or as somebody who you feel um, is not necessarily yourself. Um, so there's lots of kind of different forms of crossing and it's told in a very beautiful way in that it, there's two timelines basically. The first timeline is sort of a before in which um, Albanian folklore is woven in through the story and then kind of also reflects um, the after which um, that timeline kind of is a lot more mysterious and a lot more kind of real and down to earth but still leaves you kind of questioning what's happening until the end when like the timelines kind of converge and reveals to you the truth of what's going on. Um, it's just a very beautiful book, highly recommend it. Um, I preferred this a lot more than his first book, which is My Cat Yugoslavia. I, I just love the cover of this book also, it's just... Mm, I think that's the main reason I bought it, for the cover. So then the next book is The Invention of Morel by Adolfo Bioy Casares. Um, this book is a science fiction book um, from the 60s, I believe, or thereabouts. Um, and it kind of deals with the question of reality and unreality and living in, and choosing to live, I guess, in the imagination. Um, it's about a man who kind of gets swept up onto an island, but on this island there's all these people um, and he's trying to make sense of why these people keep on ignoring him. Um, and he sort of tries to figure out what's going on in this island and why things are happening the way they're happening. Um, it's very thought-provoking and kind of leaves you wanting more because it is quite short. Um, but it's quite lovely also because it does have a romance storyline, which is, um, it's something that kind of, <laughs> it's a anti-romantic romance storyline, which I think kind of puts it in a genre of its own, I guess. Even though it's kind of like sci-fi, it still has these other genre conventions, but plays with them in a very interesting way. Um, and I, I quite like that about this book. There was, there was a few things I wish had been done better in that book, but I would still recommend it to many people. So the next book is uh, Beautiful by Massimo Cuomo. This is um, a book that is from an Italian author. It's set in Mexico, but it kind of also feels quite French. Um, it, it's, it feels very French in the way that it is um, written and the style or like the themes I guess of this book but then it does also feel very Mexican because of the where it's set but also like the idea of the book um feels quite uh like a it's like something you would read in Latin American literature anyway it's one of these books that kind of plays very well with the different notions of literature and it kind of presents a very interesting story that I feel could be magical realist but it isn't. And I think maybe I would have liked it more if it was ma more magical realist, um, because it definitely has that sort of vibe to it. It's about a 
it's about two brothers. The youngest brother is born, and he is the most beautiful boy in the world. So much so that like the, the entire city kind of makes camp outside of his house, like uh, during the book, um, just to see him and to get glimpses of him. And everybody wants to touch him and to know him and everything. And it's a, sort of about kind of not only how that affects him himself, but how that affects his brother, his eldest brother, who doesn't have that beauty. Um, who has like a different kind of uh, way of being in the world and is kind of then living in his own brother's shadow and stuff. And it traces the relationships that they have not only with each other but with their family and then with other people around the family. Yeah, it's just quite interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but I, I kind of wish it had gone a little bit further than it did go because I think it has a lot more potential to be more akin to a kind of the Latin American canon, um, because it still does feel quite European. Um, so, it, and I appreciate that it is a European author, so, so that would probably be why. But I think it just could have gone that step further to really immerse itself in a story that I think it wanted to be, but maybe didn't quite make it to be. Um, it's still a very solid four star read, so I would still recommend it to many people. And I gave it to a friend, and that friend really enjoyed it, so you know, it's 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 a good book. Still recommend it, um, just I wanted more. And then lastly, the other book that I got from Gaze the Word, um, I, 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 I asked them to order it because obviously it's not a queer book, so it's not something they would have in stock anyway. Um, and that's Tender is the Flesh by Agostina Bazterica. And this book is sort of a dystopian in the future book if um, after there's a big flu that kind of contaminates the meat of animals so that we as humans can't eat that meat anymore. Um, and then the meat eaters go into starting to farm human flesh and people start to eat that. Now this book, I feel, to try to, the best way to explain this book is that it's sort of the literary version of, of Parasite, uh, the big Korean film that kind of, you know, shook the world last year. This, it's the literary version of that, not because it deals with the same themes, obviously they're very different themes, but there are some underlying themes which are very similar. But it's more of a fact, it's like a sort of question of ethics, and there's no right or wrong in this book. And that the main character that you're kind of dealing with, their own ethical perspective, demonstrates how ethics are constantly relational and how ethics are always changing and evolving and are never what they seem. So the story arc of this book traces that sort of ethical journey in which everything's grey. There's no black, there's no white, everything is just grey and it kind of got a little bit twisted in the end in a way that kind of shook me. I was just like... <gasps> I just wasn't expecting it in the slightest yet, um, and I don't know whether I liked this book or not in the way that it went. I um, just because I, I may, it's so unsettling as a book, and I don't know whether it, that unsettling is what I didn't like or whether I didn't actually like the direction it took. But I feel like it needed to take that direction, so I was very much on the fence about this book. But much like I was quite on the fence about Parasite, actually. So maybe that makes sense. I still gave it four stars because I did really enjoy it. And I think, you know, so many people will kind of love the ethical dilemma of this book. And I'll be interested because I feel like I haven't actually seen many people talking about this book, even though another gorgeous cover um, and more people should be talking about this book because it's good. Just maybe not perfect. But maybe it is perfect for what it is. Now I'm in an ethical dilemma. So those are just a taste of six books that I have read over the past six months. Um, hopefully there'll be another video soon. I feel like I can't make any promises though because we've seen what's happened this year with my reading and with my booktube making. Um, so until next time, we'll leave it at that. Bye bye.